Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture. Uh, this is the fourth installment of the trigonometry unit. We are going to apply these trig ratios um, to these triangles and solve them. And then we are going to um, use the trig ratios in a unique problem um, using an octagon table. Um, you'll see when we get there. And today we're gonna do the lecture in red, you know, to switch it up. Uh, so let's get started. Um, whenever the question says solve a triangle, um, that means that it wants you to calculate all of the other angles and sides that have not already been shown. Uh, so usually that's going to be um, requiring you to do three things. Uh, either find two angles and a side, or to find two sides and an angle. Uh, or some combination thereof. Um, sorry. There we go. So, uh, in this problem, we are given the triangle XYZ, and we are going to find all the other measures um, given the, and the sides and the angles to the nearest tenth. Uh, that means one decimal place. So, uh, I check out this triangle, and I see that I have two sides um, and it is a right angle triangle, which means I can use the Pythagorean theorem. So, um, Pythagorean's theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And, um, where this is the time when c squared is the hypotenuse. In this case, the hypotenuse is the side of the triangle that we want to find. It is the side that is opposite of the right angle. So that means all we need to do is square root a squared and b squared to find it. So c is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And in this case, the two sides are given to be 10 and 6. So the square root of 10, sorry, the square root of 10 squared plus 6 squared so we find out that C, which is equal to side Y, is equal to 11.7 centimeters. So now that we have all the sides, we can use trig ratios um, to find another one of the angles. Uh, let's find angle X. Uh, that is the bottom right. And we are going to use uh, the opposite over adjacent ratio, which is tan. So tan of our unknown theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Um, that means that tan of theta is equal to opposite of x is 10, and adjacent to x is 6. We can then inverse tan both sides to get theta. So theta is equal to tan inverse of 10 over 6 which gets us theta, which is equal to angle x, is 59 degrees. Uh, point zero degrees, actually, because we want it to one decimal place. And now, because we know two out of three angles in the triangle, we can find the other, uh, because we know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. We have a right angle triangle, that means that the two remaining um, angles add up to 90. So I, to find the other angle, Z, I can simply subtract 59 from 90. So Z is equal to 90 minus 59.0, and that equals 31.0 degrees for Z. So I have solved now all of the uh, missing information. Uh, that means that I have solved the triangle. As you can see, there are three pieces of information that I was required to find. That is pretty standard for a question that requires you to, quote, solve a triangle. Um, usually you're going to be given three pieces of information. We'll move on to the next problem. Uh, this is solving a triangle again. We have a different triangle. This one's D, E, F. 
So let's draw it here this time. And in this problem, this is our right angle. F is our right angle, which means that uh, we've got 5.0 over here. And it says that this is 25 degrees for an angle. So um, we know two angles out of the three. So we can do what we just did in the last step of the previous problem. We can take uh, 180 and subtract the two remaining angles. Uh, there are the two angles that we know to find the last one. Now because it's a right angle triangle, that is 90, which means that the two remaining angles must equal 90 added together. We know one of them, we can find the other. So we can find, sorry, this is D and E. We can find uh, angle D by subtracting 25 from 90. So D is equal to 90.0 minus 25.0, which is equal to 65 degrees for angle D. We've already done one of the three things that we need to do. Um, let's find uh, side D next. So across from D, that's side D. Across from F, be side F. Those are the two remaining sides that we need to find out. So let's do uh, side D first. Um, we can use the 25 degree angle and use that as our reference point. So um, that means that from that angle, D is the adjacent side, F is the hypotenuse, and five is the opposite side. So we are going to be interested in the opposite and adjacent sides, which means we're going to use tan. So tan of 25 degrees is equal to opposite, which is five, over adjacent, which is our unknown. So when our unknown is on the bottom, we switch those two to uh, get D on the top over here so we can uh, find out what the unknown is. So D is equal to five divided by tan of 25. Punch that into your calculator, five divided by bracket, 25 tan, close bracket, that will give you 10.7 centimeters for side D. Sorry that I got so close to the side of the page. That is 10.7 centimeters for side D. We found two pieces of information that we need to. We are going to try to find the last one. Um, it is going to be side F. So we are again um, going to use Pythagorean's theorem. So we have done um, three different ways to find these. And you can actually do like many, many different more. Um, you can find uh, F, uh, the side F using, um, let's see, sine um, of 25 and opposite is five and F is your unknown. So there's different ways to do this. Um, since F is the hypotenuse, it's really, really easy to find it that way. Um, the hypotenuse is found by square rooting the other side so C is equal to F in this case, and that's equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. And we're given those sides, or we found them already. So one of them is 10.7 and the other is five. Seven squared plus five squared. That will all equal 11.8 centimeters. for side F. So you'd square those two, you'd add them together and square root the total. So again, we found one, two, three pieces of information and that's all we would need to find. Um, usually it's three when you're solving a triangle. We'll move on to a unique type of question. Um, very interesting. And I would take note of it. It's kind of important. It's, it's, um, you can solve many different problems using kind of a logic method. So uh, we have a small table that has the shape of a regular octagon. So an octagon has eight sides. The distance from one vertex to the opposite vertex is measured through the center of the table is approximately 30 centimeters. There is no, there's a strip of wood veneer around the edge of the table and we want to know what 
the length of this veneer is to the nearest centimeter. So essentially we want to know what the perimeter of that octagon is. So there's eight different sides to it. Uh, I'm going to start by drawing myself an octagon so that I can draw all over it and uh, show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to try to draw it kind of large. Uh, let's see. It's red like a stop sign. That was okay. I'm going to use the top part for my diagrams because it looks better. Um, okay, so we've also got a point in the middle. I don't know. Oh, I'll use my ruler. Okay, let's see. Let's go point to point. It's not going to be exactly in the middle, but it will be close. Okay, that is our middle point. Ha. Um, now, we know that it is 30 centimeters from one side, one corner to the other corner. And if this is right in the middle, that means that one of these sides is 15 centimeters right there. Um, if the whole thing is 30, half of it, even though it doesn't look like half in my drawing, is 15. Um, so, what we want to do is we want to attempt to apply a trig ratio to find out what one of these sides is, or at least a part of one of these sides, um, so that we can find out what the whole perimeter is. It is broken into eight equal sections. So if we can find out what one is, we can find out what the whole thing is, no problem. Um, in a circle, which this table does make all the way around, right? It does make a circle. Um, there are 360 degrees in a circle. Now, the problem with these lines is that none of them make a 90 degree angle with the edge of our quote unquote circle. Uh, if we were to draw another line, one that's in between here and goes directly to the side, we can actually create a 90 degree angle right here, which is really, really useful. This 90 degree angle uh, allows us to use a trigonometric ratio to solve for um, the side length or half of the side length. But we don't know how many degrees are in that portion of the circle, right? If we're using this as our triangle, get out another color here, we're using this is our triangle. We don't know how many degrees that triangle makes up as it touches this circle. Um, but we can imagine that um, since we have 360 degrees, we can split it up. We can divide it. It is all equally divided. These are all equal pieces. And if I split it down the middle, um, that would make these equal pieces as well. So. We have eight pieces split down the middle, which would make 16 pieces. So each individual angle would be exactly the same and 360 divided by 16. 360 divided by 16 is 200, not 200, 22.5 degrees. So that means that that angle of interest, I'm gonna draw a long arrow here, so bear with me. That angle of interest is 22.5 degrees. Now, I have a right angle triangle with a side and an angle. That sounds like what I need to know to use one of my trigonometric ratios. Let's draw this triangle out uh, a little bit larger so that we can see it, okay? So the right angle is going to be up top. So this is the right angle right here. And the side that connects the center of the circle to the corner is 15 centimeters. And our angle of interest is 22.5 degrees. Let's label our triangle based on hypotenuse opposite adjacent. So across in the right angle is hypotenuse. If this is our angle of interest, this would be our opposite side and this would be our adjacent side. And what we really wanna know 
is what the length of the opposite side is. We know what the length of the opposite side is. We know the length of half of one piece, or we know one sixteenth of it, just like one sixteenth of it makes up 360 degrees. So um, let's find out what opposite is and multiply that by um, several different, by a number to get the total. Uh, okay, so we want opposite, we have hypotenuse. That sounds like sine to me. So sine of 22.5 is equal to opposite, so I'll call that x over hypotenuse, which is 15. x is then going to equal 15 times sine of 22.5, where x equals, let's see here, 5.74 centimeters. So 1 16th of it is 5.74 centimeters. We need to multiply that number by 16 to get the entire perimeter, which is the length of the vernier. Um, so that equals 92 centimeters. We would want to write a, a sentence. I'll see if I can fit it at the top. Let's see, I'll write it in a different color here. The vernier is 92 centimeters. Yeah, that's what I'll write. The, how do I spell veneer? Let's get this right. Veneer is 92 centimeters. So there's quite a few steps and it's a lot of just splitting it up correctly. Um, thinking about how many degrees are in a circle um, this is going to be uh, something that you'll need to do in problems on assignments and maybe even on the test. Um, so remembering that there's 360 degrees in a, in a circle and that you can split it up if it's all uh, arranged equally around it, uh, depending on how many sides there are. And then being able to determine the side length and go from there to determine the entire perimeter um, by multiplying it by 16. I know we have 16 pieces. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely let me know. I uh, hope this was helpful, and I'll see you for what I believe is the final installment next time.